This is Bob Capetta from the University of Illinois Chicago, and this is Math 121 Quiz Week 14 Solutions. So the first question asks us to plot these polar points. So we have r is 2 and theta is 4 pi over 3 for the point P. So to do that, we've got to find the angle that corresponds to 4 pi over 3, which is here. Here's the positive versions. 4, 4 pi over 3, and the negative versions would go backwards. We're going to go out to 2 on the 4 pi over 3 radial line. So 2 miles, the first circle, second circle out on the 4 pi over 3 line is where that point P would be. You'll notice it's here in the third quadrant. To get a better look at that, here is 4 pi over 3. Notice 60 degrees, 30 degrees away from 270, 60 degrees away from 180. 2 out. First circle is 1, second circle is 2, and that's our point P at r is 2, theta is 4 pi over 3. Our next example is Q with an r of negative 3 and theta is 7 pi over 6. So 7 pi over 6 is this line, that's the positive direction for 7 pi over 6. The negative direction would be that way. So if I'm going to be negative 3 in the 7 pi over 6 direction. That would be the same as positive 3 in the pi over 6 direction. 1, 2, 3 is where that would be. So to get a better look at that, you can indeed see it. 7 pi over 6 is here, extends back that way. If r is negative 3, we go backwards from 7 pi over 6. Here's positive 7 pi over 6, go backwards. Circle r is 1, circle r is 2, circle r is 3. So that's r is negative 3, theta is 7 pi over 6, or equivalently, another name for q would be r is 3, and theta is pi over 6. One more for us to do. We have r is 5, so 5 circles away from the center. Theta is negative pi over 4. That will put us in quadrant number 4. So pi over 4, 45 degrees, is here. So negative pi over 4 would be here, also 7 pi over 4. And from there we just go out five circles, one, two, three, four, five. Five circles out would be our goal to kind of see it a little bit better. There you can see the five circles, one, two, three, four, five in various colors. Negative pi over four, 45 degrees from the x-axis, five circles out from the center. That's where that point would be, r is five and theta is negative pi over four. So the next question is to express this polar point in rectangular form. So r is 7 and theta is 5 pi over 6. Just to visualize that, that'll be in the second quadrant. But what do we know? Here's our relationship, x, y, r, theta. So we have various geometric relationships that we can use. The first thing I'll recognize is the cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine of theta is x divided by r. Sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of theta is y over r. So you'll notice we could solve for x, we could solve for y. Multiplying both sides by r, we get r times the cosine of theta is x. And similarly, r times the sine of theta is y. Well, we have r is 7. We have theta is 5 pi over 6. So using these formulas, we can convert this from polar form, from r theta form, into rectangular form, into x, y form. So x is r cos theta, y is r sine theta. r, 7, cos, 5 pi over 6. Quadrant 2, cos is negative. Reference angle is pi over 6. Cos of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. In quadrant 2, that would be negative. So 7 times negative root 3 over 2, or negative 7 root 3 over 2 is x. For y, y is r sine theta. That would be 7 times the sine of 5 pi over 6. Quadrant 2, sine is positive. Reference angle pi over 6, 30. Sine of 30 is a half, so it's positive a half. 7 times a half is 7 halves. So if we have r theta form, 7 5 pi over 6, that's equivalent to x being negative 7 root 3 over 2, and y being 7 over 2. Next example, we have point B, which is negative 3 pi over 4. So pi over 4 would be in the first quadrant. But the fact that it's negative 3, that makes me go backwards. Now I'm going to be in the third quadrant. So I expect both x and y to be negative. 
our cos theta is x, negative 3, cos pi over 4 is x. Cos of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2, so we get x is negative 3 root 2 over 2. x is negative as expected. y is r sine theta, so negative 3 times the sine of pi over 4. Negative 3 times root 2 over 2, or also negative 3 root 2 over 2. x is negative, y is negative. Indeed, that will be a third quadrant point. Next, we're going to take a look at uh, c is 6 and theta is negative pi over 3. That would put us in the fourth quadrant. We're measuring in the negative direction. That would be clockwise from 0. Same deal. Cosine of negative pi over 3, that's positive because it's in the fourth quadrant. Cosine of pi over 3 is a half. And we get x is 3. Y is our sine theta 6 times sine of negative pi over 3. Well, in the fourth quadrant, that would be negative. Sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2, but I would need negative root 3 over 2 if I'm in the fourth quadrant. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we get negative 3 root 3 is y for that fourth quadrant polar point. Next, we want to convert equations to rectangular form. To do that, we need to take a look at the various relationships we have amongst the variables. How do we go from polar form to rectangular form and back? Well, we have a right triangle here. x squared plus y squared is r squared. That's important to know. Next, theta. Theta is opposite over adjacent, so the tangent of theta will be y over x. And as we showed on the previous discussion, our cosine theta is x and our sine theta is y. If we know these four facts, we should be able to do several conversions. So the first example I have here is r equals 3. Well, if r equals 3, that's nice, but r squared is x squared plus y squared. So I'll go ahead and I'll square both sides here to make that r squared is 9. But if r squared is 9, I'll then replace r squared with x squared plus y squared. And we get the fact that we've converted r equals 3, a circle of radius 3, to x squared plus y squared equals 9. Circle of radius 3 centered at the origin, as we know. Next example, a little more challenging. Theta is 5 pi over 6. I'm going to use this fact. I'm going to use the tangent of theta is y over x. So how am I going to do that? If theta is 5 pi over 6, tangent theta is tangent to 5 pi over 6. But what is tangent theta? Tangent theta is the same as y over x, so I can replace this left side with y over x. And the right side, what is the tangent of 5 pi over 6? How about sine 5 pi over 6 divided by cosine of 5 pi over 6? Again, notice, tan theta becomes y over x. Tangent of 5 pi over 6 becomes sine 5 pi over 6 divided by cosine 5 pi over 6. Reference angle is pi over 6. Sine is positive. Cos is negative. So what's that going to give us? Sine of pi over 6 is a half. In the second quadrant, it's still a half. Cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2, but in the second quadrant, it's negative root 3 over 2. Multiply top and bottom by 2, and I just get y over x is 1 over negative root 3. And we could rewrite that if we wanted to and say something like y is negative x over root 3. But that's certainly a reasonable equation as well for this theta equals 5 pi over 6. This is a line through the origin. You'll notice the y-intercept is 0. As we would expect, theta equaling some angle would always be a line through the origin. Next we have r equals 4 cos theta. Now, what can I use? Well, r squared is x squared plus y squared. I might be able to use that. r cos theta is x. I might be able to use that. So squaring both sides isn't going to work here, but multiplying both sides by r will. Multiply the left side by r. Multiply the right side by r. So r times r is 4 r cos theta. r times r, r squared is 4 r cos theta, but we know what those things are. r squared is x squared plus y squared. r cos theta is x. So this will become x squared plus y squared equals 4x, which we could bring the 4x to the left side. We could complete the square. We could find the center and the radius. But this is good enough. We've converted the equation to rectangular form from what we started with. Our next question is to graph the equation r equals 8 sine theta. So I'm choosing five values here just to get an idea of what's happening. If theta is 0, sine 0 is 0, 8 times 0 is 0, so I have theta is 0, r is 0. Pi over 6, sine of pi over 6 is a half, 8 times a half is 4. 
theta is pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. 8 times 1 is 8. 5 pi over 6 in quadrant 2. Sine is still positive. That's still a half. So we're at 4 again. And if we get to pi, sine of pi is 0. So we're back at 0. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 points. That's enough to get an idea of what this graph will look like. So here's 0, 0. B is the second point that we're interested in. What was that again? That was theta is pi over 6, r is 4. Do we see that here is r is 4? Theta is pi over 6. The third point is way up here. So theta is pi over 2 and r is 8. So that's what I'm calling C. Point D, that's the fourth point that we have. What was that again? 5 pi over 6, 4. So 5 pi over 6 out 4. And then the last point, pi, sends me back to 0 again. So it starts here and then it ends here. And the question is, what does that graph look like? And, you know, realistically, you would need several more points to get a reasonable graph. But um, it's hard to do that without a calculator. But surprise, surprise, this graph is actually a circle. If we would have chosen more points, we would have seen that that's the way those points move. And indeed, that problem is going to give us a circle. Our last question here on this quiz is to convert z equals 2 root 3 minus 2i to r cos theta plus i times the sine theta form. So 2 root 3 minus 2i. That's equivalent to an x of 2 root 3 and a y of negative 2. And in essence, this process requires us to find the r for this rectangular form with this x and this y, as well as to find the theta and then rewrite it in that r cos theta plus i times the sine of theta form. So we know that x squared plus y squared is r squared. So our x here is 2 root 3 and our y is negative 2. 2 root 3 squared plus negative 2 squared is r squared. 2 squared is 4, root 3 squared is 3, 4 times 3 is 12, negative 2 squared is 4, 12 and 4 is r squared, 16 is r squared, 4 is r. So that is the modulus or the absolute value of that complex number. So z is 2 root 3 minus 2i, that's over 2 root 3, down 2. So let's visualize that r, this distance is going to be 4. We know that and we're going to need to find theta. Recognize this is in quadrant 4. So z, this complex number, is in quadrant 4. Now I'm calling this angle uh, alpha because all the way around would be theta. From here, from the positive x-axis, all the way to that complex number is theta. But I'm just going to go ahead and find this little angle alpha. I'm going to say cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine of alpha is 2 root 3 over 4. Cosine of alpha is root 3 over 2. And we know if that's the case, we know that alpha is pi over 6 or 30 degrees. So if this little guy here is 30 degrees, all the way around it would be 330 degrees. Or if you like negative 30 degrees, marching it down the other way. So we have r is 4, and we have theta is 330 degrees. We want to write it in the form r cos theta plus i times the sine of theta. So r cos 330 plus i times the sine of 330. Or if you like, r cos negative 30 plus i times the sine of negative 30. Now let's just do a quick check here. So r cos 30 plus i times the sine of, excuse me, r cos 330 plus i times the sine of 330. Cos 330, fourth quadrant, positive, reference angle is 30. Cos of 30 is root 3 over 2. Sine of 30 is a half, but in the fourth quadrant, that's negative. And then distributing this, 4 over 2 is 2, 2 root 3. 4 over 2 is 2 times negative 1, negative 2i. So indeed we get 2 root 3 plus negative 2i, which is what we said that z was. And that will conclude this lesson.